So now we'll discuss the content in lecture 10. We'll have the discussion in two parts. So the first part is directly given in the course UHV2 that is going to be taught in the second year. And uh, in the same book, if you see, we have given a glimpse of uh, a deeper understanding of the self. That is something that we'll be discussing in the second part. So we are talking about the human being and we are talking about the self in detail now. So this is something that we had studied <clears throat> in the introductory workshop as well as the part one refresher. So self is there, that is I am there and body is there. And there's exchange of information between me and body. This is something that we studied in the previous lecture. Now I can go to further study myself. So when I go to study myself, I see that I have ability of desire in me. I do desire. I have ability of thought in me. I have ability of expectation in me, isn't it? Now with these abilities, I have imagination in me. So all the activities in me club together can be termed as imagination. So this is something that we have been able to observe. This is something that we studied also. So try to make out whether you are able to see that, yes, imagination is there in you. So maybe we can have some response here. Are you able to see that imagination is there in you? So the imagination is there in the self, not the body. The body is a physiochemical entity. Now going further, we can see that whatever is there as a behavior or work, okay, has imagination at the base. So whatever is there in my imagination can only go to the behavior, okay, can only go to the work. So my behavior is based on my imagination. My work is my is based on my imagination. The imagination is there at the base. This is another thing that I can observe. So whether I am talking with somebody in a heated manner or politely, that is determined by my imagination. If I have the feeling of relationship with the other, okay, then my behavior will be on in one way. If I have the feeling of opposition for somebody, then my behavior will be some other way. If I'm at peace within, my work will be in one pattern, in one way. If I'm not at peace within, then my work pattern will be different. So my work is based on the imagination that I have. The behavior also is based on the imagination that I have. This is something that we can observe very finite, very finely and try to make out. Okay, Professor Nachiketa Kumari. So we can say that uh, I am able to um, imagine i am capable or uh, i am able to imagine because i am capable of desiring thinking and expecting isn't it that that is how we can say uh will not use the word because so i have the ability to desire think and expect and thus i imagine no 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 you see you have put this activity kriya in in the, in yeah. this bigger circle imagination is in activity and uh, mm -hmm. the ability are desire, thought, and expectation. That means my, whatever I am behaving or working, that is due to my imagination, which is an activity, and that I am capable of imagining because I am I have got desires, I have got thoughts, and I have got expectations. Isn't it? Yeah, the problem is with the use of word because. So the ability is there, and with that ability, I am active. So it's not something like cause and effect. That's why I'm avoiding the use, uh, use of word because. So the, I have the ability to desire, I have the ability to think, I have the ability to expect, and with that, I'm imagining all the time. Oh, I understand. Right. Yeah. See, uh, my question was uh, there about uh, uh, what we say that whatever is there in our imagination, that comes into uh, our behavior and work. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, uh, we have seen there are many Babas and Gurus uh, who pretend to be uh, having very uh, good values and all. So their behavior initially, we feel like they are very good and uh, uh, dealing with values and all. But uh, we can, uh, we have so many examples that after they, uh, some time, uh, whatever they behave, that has been uh, completely contradictory to 
what they were showing earlier. So how is that, uh, that without having uh, this uh, in imagination, they are able to express themselves in their behavior earlier? So the scenario is like this. In the imagination, there are multiple thoughts. Okay, so one thought is getting expressed in behavior, the other thought is not getting expressed in behavior because it is the decision of the self again, what to express and what not to express. So for example, one may have the thought to, you know, uh, let's say cheat somebody. And one may decide that if I have to cheat somebody, I'm just giving an example, not particularly for your example. So the thought that is the analysis that is there is in the self and it is like uh, if I have to cheat somebody then I have to express these words so with that feeling of cheating somebody one kind of expression is coming out so that is possible so it's not that every imagination that you have gets expressed in behavior it is again your decision what to express what not to express okay. that, that's, that makes it clear Very good. thank you sir Now, we'll explore this imagination in detail now. This is something that we had not done in the introductory workshop. So desire essentially means imaging. <clears throat> so I image something, what I want to be. So the feeling part that is there in me is here at the level of desire. Now, what I image, something about what I want to be, then I try to go about it. I try to make out how to fulfill that. Okay, how to ensure the fulfillment of the feeling. So I detail it, and that is there at the level of thought. So thought essentially means two things, analyzing and comparing. So analyzing means splitting into parts. For example, one may have a desire to be a person who has a house of one's own. This desire is there. So you image yourself being in a house of your own, not in a rented house. Now that image of yourself being in a house of your own gets analyzed how to go about it, whether to take a loan from bank or to take some loan from parents or to make saving first and then go for a house of your own, purchase a house in, a, in an urban area or a rural area or a metro city or the here or there, so many things you analyze. Now, whatever you analyze, you compare among all the available options. So if I go for a loan from a bank, then uh, what will happen? If I take loan from parents, then what will happen? If I take loan from friends, then what will happen? And you have multiple options here. So whatever you analyze also gets compared because there are multiple options coming out of that. So this analysis and comparing go together as a thought. And then you select something and with the selection comes the taste. For example, you select uh, for going loan from a bank. And then the test comes, no, they will have exorbitant rates of interest. And uh, by the time I pay off the loan, uh, my loan is going to be much, much higher. Okay, so the other choice could be taking from a friend, but then you have, you have a test that if I ask a friend and he denies, then I will not feel good. So you have a test that, okay, I will not feel good if I ask for a loan from a friend. Then why not ask it from parents? So. Whatever you try to select, you have a taste associated with that. And whatever taste you go for makes the final selection. Now, if you see, I just gave an example of owning a house. You may have similarly an imagination about owning a car. You may have imagination about your career. So presently you are working in a college and you want some advancement of career. So whether you have to continue in the same college or go to some other college, Okay, whether you have to continue in teaching or go for some industry, right? So you try to image so many things and then to fulfill that image, you analyze and compare. And then whatever you analyze and compare, you select with some taste. And this is all that makes it imagination. These five activities are there in the imagination. And based on this, your behavior and work gets guided. So we'll explore these activities in detail uh, when we have the higher level uh, course again. But in brief, we can discuss uh, the imagination part and we can discuss a little more detail about this, this workshop also. 
see this part clear so yesterday you started making out whatever is going on in your imagination and you try to uh, make out the object of imagination now for every object of imagination you try to see what is the imaging part there what is the analyzing part there what is the comparing part there how the selection is taking place what is you are getting within and we how this is continuing all the time so this desire being at the base that is this imaging being at the base you think you think that is analyze and compare and then you try to select and test and that goes as your behavior and work gets expressed at the level of body ji miss gurleen uh so uh, i just wanted to ask you at times it can go in the opposite direction as well like we taste something and based on that uh, the desire occurs like rather than first having an image and then analyzing and comparing i mean it could be a vice versa we can it could even be that you taste something and based on that you want to select something then you analyze compare and then the whole image crops up yeah it could be but if you see the whole thing the basic image that we have is you want to have a happy life yes sir happy and prosperous life so that image is there at the base now some information comes to you through the body as an information and that desire innate desire to be happy and prosperous okay uh okay. that gets triggered with this particular sight that you got or the information that you got and then you start analyzing and comparing right okay thank yeah. you so that may happen yes yeah mrs rupali uh yes uh priya can you explain this selection and testing part uh, in uh, detail uh, i haven't understood uh, that a yeah, selection so whatever... i select the uh, you know what is good for us so we select uh, but what is testing there yeah so I, i gave an example of going for a house of one soul so you have multiple choices one is to take mm -hmm. loan from a bank take loan from parents to take take loan from friends now mm -hmm. whatever you try to select you have a test associated so if i take loan from a bank maybe it will have very high rates and then i will be having to pay so much of amount and then you feel not so so happy about it okay you mm -hmm. think of taking loan from a friend and mm -hmm. then you have a feeling that if he says no then how will i feel mm -hmm. you try to think about taking loan from parents and then have a feeling that my parents are so old and at this stage i should be working for them not the other way around mm -hmm. that is not even the uh, affectionate mm -hmm. of me to ask for loan from parents so mm -hmm. every time you are having a taste associated with the selection okay so whatever are the implications or you know ha happenings after i select you know what are the consequences of that is the test i mean uh, it could be uh, consequence it could be the process also so when you go to ask for loan from your parents and you are mm -hmm. interacting okay so what feeling you are getting there you taste okay. that feeling mm -hmm. okay yeah example, that is uh, uh, take, taking a small example let's say you have to make selection for food okay. mm. so whether i have to cook Uh, at home or i have to order for something outside mm -hmm. right so maybe uh, we if you try to cook at home and you feel that it is so cold now you feel mm -hmm. like i'll have to stand in the kitchen for so long and then i will feel cold all the time mm -hmm. okay. so you get a taste that i will feel cold for one hour at least if i cook at home right mm -hmm. and then you think of ordering from for something from outside mm -hmm. okay then you will not feel cold that way but you will feel that it is corona time and maybe uh, my body gets spoiled by the food yeah. mm -hmm. so you again get a taste so yeah. whenever you try to select something a taste is associated with this okay ha ha yes yes now i understood yes. so <clears throat> this is something that we were analyzing so there is some content of imagination we took some examples here there is some content of imagination here now you see that whatever is the content of imagination has a something at the source so it could be based on some precondition so something that i have assumed without knowing okay it could be the source of my imagination the second source could be sensation the information that i get from the body and the third source 
is our natural acceptance. This is something that we have investigated earlier also. So I will not detail upon it. You already have so many examples to recollect where we have taken examples about preconditioning or sensation and natural acceptance. So maybe we can have a reflection from you here. So I'm able to be aware of my imagination. Try to reflect upon this. So if the imagination is dictated by preconditioning, then this is enslavement because something from outside is dictating my imagination. If the imagination is dictated by some sensation, then again, I'm enslaved. But if my imagination is guided by my natural acceptance, then I'm self-organized. This is something that we have studied earlier also. I will not detail upon this. So this is the imagination. The same thing has been put here to detail out. So the imaging that you are having within, now whether that imaging is guided by your natural acceptance. So for example, in the case of house, so whether I have understood my need and that's how I have the desire for a house. Or since I saw a new house of a friend of mine, okay, and the look of the very house gave the desire in me, initiated that desire in me, then this is based on sensation. Or you feel that if I have a house of my own, a new house of my own, then I will get more respect in the society. And then some preconditioning is dictating your desire. So this is the way we have to analyze all our desires. We have to understand what the source of desire is. So for every imagination that you have, you can make out this way. So one analysis would be, what is the source of my imagination? The other analysis would be, whatever is going on in my imagination. Where, what is the role of imaging here? What am I analyzing here? What am I comparing here? How do I select? And what test I get with the selection? So this is all kind of homework that you have to take up as a part of this discussion. Uh, this is something that uh, you can do in the evening today, trying to analyze yourself, trying to study yourself in detail. Maybe we can have another reflection here. Yeah. So imagination motivated by preconditioning and or sensation is enslavement. Are you able to see that? So <clears throat> going further about these three words, preconditioning, sensation, and natural acceptance. So preconditioning is assuming without knowing. And that depends on something or something, someone outside, and which keeps changing. Not sure if it leads to harmony or it if it leads to contradiction. So sometimes it leads to harmony, sometimes it leads to contradiction. So because we are enslaved while working with preconditioning, so that kind of indefiniteness would be there in the imagination. The second source is sensation. So happiness from favorable sensation of sound, touch, form, taste, smell through the body. And uh, we try to make that as a source of happiness. One thing to note here is that sensation is not something wrong in itself. So I get the presence of my body through sensation. I utilize the body rightly and for that I need sensation. So sensation is not something which is undesirable. It is very much desirable. The problem arises when I try to derive happiness out of sensation. This is something to be understood. So sensation has a role to play in my conduct as a human being. The problem arises when I try to derive happiness out of sensation because the happiness that I derive out of sensation cannot be continuous. And then they, that may lead to happiness from indulgence. So when one may try to work for indulgence so that happy can, happiness can continue. And you will see another thing here that some physical facility that you uh, use, okay? And you try to derive sensation out of it for the sake of happiness. So the physical facility is necessary. For example, food is necessary. And it is also giving you taste in the beginning. But as you go on consuming that facility, gradually it becomes unnecessary, though you may still have that taste. If you try to consume it further, it will lose its taste. It is already unnecessary, it loses its taste also. And gradually it becomes intolerable. For example, you are feeling hungry in the morning, okay? And you cook something for yourself. So you are, the food is necessary for you. While eating, you are getting the taste out of it. But let's say you had 
this much hunger and you have eaten it you can that much of stuff so the food has become now unnecessary for you though if you still continue to eat you will get that taste out of it but if you keep on eating that it will gradually become tasteless okay in fact you can experience that lose its taste is its taste and right? uh, try it gets uh, you get a bad taste out of it if you continue with that and then we'll see that it, it becomes intolerable you cannot consume more than that for example some example that we keep on taking every time one may be very much fond of rasgulla and one is feeling hungry also so it is necessary as well as tasty now you go on consuming rasgulla 10 rasgulla 12 13 14 okay now it has become unnecessary because the stomach is full now though you are still getting the sweet taste but after some time if you try to consume 20 rasgulla it becomes tasteless and if you still try to consume then it will be intolerable because there is no room left in the stomach for consuming rasgulla isn't it so this sequence always applies to something that we try to fulfill ourselves through sensation the third source is natural acceptance so the purpose or what to be what to do as a human being and that leads to harmony that is happiness within continuity is desirable possible here so for relationship we do have the natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment for complementarity and not for opposition similarly we have the natural acceptance for harmony and that is for mutual enrichment and not for exploitation being in harmony within and harmony outside and we have the natural acceptance for coexistence and not for conflict so essentially what we need to do is that we have to explore our natural acceptance and the more we are aware of the natural acceptance the dependence for happiness on preconditioning or sensation gradually goes away okay so i utilize the sensation now to utilize my body as an instrument and i no longer have preconditioning as i have my source of imagination as natural acceptance that is right understanding so the way i desire to be something which is given on the top so i would like all my desires to be in harmony so that my thoughts are in harmony so that my expectation is in harmony but if i do not work for right understanding i may be in a state which is given below when my desires are in contradictions so we have taken multiple examples regarding the contradiction in desire i'm not going to take those examples again but something that you can recollect from the introductory workshop so if we do not work for right understanding then we'll have contradictions in desires we'll have contradictions in thoughts we'll have contradictions in expectations and this is unhappiness this disharmony itself is unhappiness so you can see that the unhappiness is not there outside you it's not there in the body it's not there in the world outside okay for you for you the unhappiness is there in the imagination and that essentially is the contradiction within in your desires in your thoughts in your expectations so the task in some sense is very simple i only have to work for right understanding so that i have harmony within i am free of contradictions within that is all that we have to do for that we have to make the whole program so we can have another reflection from you here any question you have any question kandi raise your hand बेस्ट ऑफ ऑल they should be at the top in the class so this is one desire and the moment they desire to be on the top in the class every other student is their opponent so this is one desire the second desire could be that every student in the class appreciates and likes me now that essentially is to do with the harmony so this competition and harmony cannot go together so the desire to be liked by others the desire to have affection from others is something which is one kind of desire and the desire to be the best of all is another kind of desire so the two are in contradiction similarly for example there is examination tomorrow so one 
desire could be to study tonight so that I can perform well in the examination. The second desire could be uh, watch the T20 match which is going on. Okay. And if you see in the imagination, the person may be distraught. So one desire is that I should be watching the cricket match. The other desire is that I should be studying tonight very well so that I can perform in the examination tomorrow. Now the two desires are in conflict. So yeah, this so, way, you can give multiple examples of contradiction in desires. So any, uh, any content of uh, imagination which is uh, yeah, based on uh, preconditioning or sensation may lead to this uh, disharmony. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Certainly. So there will be contradictory desires, contradictory thoughts and all. Yes. Thank you. So this is something that we discussed in the introductory workshop also, that in the imagination is random and disorganized, it indicates a state of confusion. And many of these imaginations may be contradictory, uh, contrary to each other and contrary to the natural acceptance. So if you observe carefully, we realize that we have accumulated a lot of desires, which are resulting in numerous thoughts and expectations. And harmony in the self is realized when there are no contradictions in the imagination and all the imagination is in accordance with natural acceptance. So certainly we would not like to be in the state which is depicted here, isn't it? We can have another reflection here. So this may be the current state when a large share of the imagination is misguided through preconditioning or sensation and a very small part is guided through natural acceptance. Okay. But we'd like to be in this state when the complete imagination is guided by right understanding. This is something where we really want to be. When the complete imagination is guided by right understanding. This is something that we discussed earlier also. Just have a look at this and we'll detail upon this in the next session. So happiness is to be in a state of harmony. And the continuity of happiness is ensured when we have this complete imagination guided by right understanding. So to sum up, the self is a unit of consciousness. It consists of various activities which are going on continuously. The activities of desire, thought, and expectation are together called imagination. And we can begin to observe the self by becoming aware of our imagination and natural acceptance. Behavior and work are expressions of our imagination. Imagination may be motivated by preconditioning or sensation or natural acceptance. When the imagination is fully motivated by natural acceptance, the self is in harmony and therefore in a state of continuous happiness. And this is being self-organized. On the other hand, when the imagination is motivated by preconditioning or sensation, the self may be in harmony or disharmony, that is contradiction. And thus in a state of happiness or unhappiness. So the state of happiness is not going to continue in this state. And the state of the self is largely decided by external influence. And this is a state of enslavement. In this state, the conduct is indefinite. So this is something that we discussed in this session. Now, we have a practice session after this. So it was mentioned that when you are consuming any physical facility, the following sequence applies. This is something that I elaborated. So you have to observe this sequence for at least five types of physical facilities. So your tasty food, TV programs, your favorite music. This is some assignment that has to be given to the students. In contrast, observe that any feeling of you is either naturally acceptable or not. If a feeling is naturally acceptable, you want it continuously. And if not acceptable naturally, you do not want it for even a moment. So what are your conclusions from this exercise? Is continuous happiness possible through sensation by consuming physical facility or not? And what are the other options for continuity of happiness? So this is something that has to go as an exercise. Then observe your imagination for about 15 minutes. This is something that you have done yesterday. List down the object of imagination at least once every minute. And from this list or from direct observation of your imagination, make a sequence diagram, something like this. And then now write down your observations. So are you able to see your imagination all the time or only sometime? If you are able to see, that is you are able to be aware of your imagination only for some time, then what do you think is the reason? Are all your imaginations well connected? That is one imagination leading logically to another one. Or are there sudden changes from one subject to another subject? Or there are gaps in between one imagination and another imagination. So what is the reason for this state of imagination? And what could be observed from this exercise? So 
try to have a look at it. The teacher's manual has the exercises and this will give you some conclusions for you. And then take your list of desires, revise it if you need to. For each desire, identify the primary source of motivation. If there is any desire which had more than one source of motivation, split it into two or more desires. For example, desire for good clothes may be motivated by your natural acceptance. This is something that we have done in the introductory workshop also. And also be motivated by the social preconditioning for the clothes or the latest fashion. In such a case, split the desire into two desires. Now write down <coughs> your observations. So what percentage of your desires is motivated by your natural acceptance? This will give you an idea of the percentage that you are self-organized. And keep in mind that natural acceptance is about purpose and does not change with time, place, or person. What percentage approximately of your desires is motivated by sensation of preconditioning? And then this can give you an idea of the percentage that you are dependent or enslaved. This is something that we had done in the introductory workshop also. And what effort is necessary to completely be self-organized? So this is something that you can do. The expected outcome is that the students are able to see that all the physical facility they use is required for a limited time in a limited quantity. Sensation through physical facility cannot be the source of continuous happiness. They are able to see that in case of feelings, they want continuity of the naturally acceptable feelings. And they do not want feelings which are not acceptable to them naturally, even for a single moment. And through this exercise, the students become aware of the activities of the self and start finding their focus of attention at different moments. Also, they are able to see that many of their desires are coming from outside to the conditioning or sensation and not based on the natural effects. So this is something that we had done uh, at our level also. If you look at the FAQs, I think most of the things we have discussed, many times I find my desire to have multiple sources. How do I analyze? So I took example for that. I do think sometimes, but not all the time. Like when I am asleep, I do not think. So why do we say activities are self or continuous? So this is something that we have discussed earlier. Uh, so even while sleeping, we have dream, isn't it? So the activity of imagination is continuing. I may or may not be aware. This is something to be responded to. Uh, how can I be sure that my imagination is motivated by natural acceptance? So if my imagination is motivated by natural acceptance, we'll find that it is satisfying. It is satisfying for me. It ensures happiness in me. And I would like to continue with that. If the source is otherwise, then I want to come out of this. This is the uh, mark. Uh, this is the identification there. That if my imagination is coming from natural acceptance, I would like to continue with this. If not, I want to come out of it. 